Good morning. Welcome to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training. Today's topic will be on route import and control. My name is Yap Chi Yuan. I'm from InfoSight and we are Huawei Authorized Learning Partner. So let's get started on our first topic. Okay. So this topic will be on the route control and route control we will normally deal with route policy. Okay. So here Route policy is used often to do the import and control route. And route policy or policy-based route is our focus for our topic. And this uh, policy-based route or the uh, route policy can both affect the packet forwarding and they do have a different type of behavior. So let's look into some of the behavior and uh, we are going to look into more in depth. And in this topic, we are going to understand the route policy and PBR principle, master the route policy and PBR configuration command. We are going to look into how we can improve the route policy uh, by looking to troubleshooting, understanding the PBR as well as the uh, PBR SM scale. Okay, so we are going to start with the PBR principle first, then uh, look into the configuration. All right. Then we look in troubleshooting. We are going to look into some cases. And finally, we will look into the exam preparation. Now let's start with the things here on the route policy and the PBR principle. Now first, we are going to discuss on the route selection tools. We have a few tools over here. Uh, namely, we have the ACL. All right, we have the prefix list. We have uh, other tools, uh, if you still remember, on the BGP, we have the AS path. We also have the uh, community filter and so on. So we have a lot of tools over here. All right, so we will look into route policy and how the route policy behave, policy-based routing, as well as the comparison between route policy and uh, PBR. All right, so let's look into our route policy selection tools. Now the first tools that we are going to look into will be on the ACL. I believe that most of you know what is the SS control list. Oh. Okay, so uh, ACL used as a tool to match packet information. You can match information for packet or you can match information based on the route advertisement. Okay. Now, second tools we are going to discuss will be on the IP prefix. And IP prefix mainly used to match routing information. All right. And uh, another tools we have is called AS path filter. AS path filter is to match the BGP AS path. And uh, one more tools that we are going to discuss will be on the community filter. The community will be on the BGP community. All right, so this community filter is exclusively used on the BGP and uh, we are using this filter to match the community from the uh, route advertisement. Let's look into ACL principle. All right, so ACL, we have name ACL and we also have a number ACL. Now, regardless uh, whether it is a name or number, so basically if referring to an alphabet or it's referring to the number. So both the name and number consist of a basic ACL, at once ACL, or it can be an L2 ACL. Okay, so if it's a basic ACL, we will just base on the source. All right, so we filter or we mesh based on the source. If it's on at once, we will base on the source IP so just now I'm referring to the IP, destination IP. We have our source and destination port. All right. It can be on the protocol. Okay. So these are the uh, element that they match using the at once ACL. If it's an L2 ACL, we will base on the L2, such as the MAC address to construct our ACL. Okay. So in the ACL, we will first, let's say we are going to create an ACL, which is a basic, let's say it's a 2000. Then we are going to create what we call this new rules number. This is the rules number. Okay, so we have multiple rules and each of the rules are identified by the rules number. Let's say now uh, I have this rules number five 
I'm going to say that is permit, all right? And I'm going to say that is a source, whatever source that I have. Then I have a rules number 10, permit, whatever that I have. So you can see that this is the rules number. And between here, we call this as a step. So between rules ID, we have a step. And by default, uh, the step here will be on 5. That's a, uh, the uh, default steps. And the step can be reconfigured, right? Now next, we look into the ACL matching uh, rules. Now firstly, packet match the rules. So just now I mentioned that we have the rules number. So if I have rules number 5, rules number 10, rules number 15, it will be matching in the order. Now if let's say there is no rules that is being matched, then there will be no match rules. So we do not have any rules. Now, depend on what type of service that you apply, okay? Now, most of the vendor, when there is no rules that is matched, will be denied. So, difference compared to other vendor, depend on the service that you apply. So, if let's say there are no rules that, that is being matched, it can be permit. All right? So, this is a bit confusing. All right, don't worry. Let's hold on. I'm going to explain that in the lab later on. Okay, so uh, let's look into the ACL classification. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on on the earlier slide, uh, ACL can be created based on the number or it can be based on the uh, name. So most often we will use name because it's easier for us to uh, refer the ACL by name. Okay, but let's look into the uh, basic ACL function. We have here four type of uh, ACL. ACL can be based on the interface, uh, even though we seldom use. Uh, most likely, we are going to use these two, uh, which is the basic ACL. As I mentioned, that this is based on the source IP, and the advanced ACL, where we based on the source and destination IP, the port, as well as the uh, services. And the L2, uh, layer 2 ACL, this will be based on the MAC address. It can be based on the source MAC, destination MAC, or it can be even based on the VLAN if you want to. Okay, so let's move on to the route selection tools and the ACL matching order. Now, as we know that ACL are being matched based on the order. All right, that is the default, the default behavior. So assuming that you are going to create a number ACL, let's say, uh, ACL 2000, you are going to say that rules 5, permit, all right, etc, etc. Then rules 10, deny, etc, etc. So uh, it will be processed based on the order. And this is by default if you never mention any order. Now in Huawei, we also have another option called automatic order. And in this automatic order, ACL rules are matched according to the depth first principle. Which means that you can configure, okay, let me clear my screen here. You can configure ACL 2000. Then you specify rules, permit. Okay, assuming that you permit 1.0.0, then with a wildcard of 0.0.255.255. Okay, then you set that rules, permit 1.1.1.1 with a 0. Now, once you do a display ACL 2000, what will happen here is that this one will be to the top. This one will be, this one will be the first one, and this one will be the second one in order. So we call this as a depth first principle. Okay, so if let's say your matching order is based on depth first principle, and uh, if you apply the interface ACL, the any rules is matched last. So you can just deny or permit, it will be matched the last and the other rules are matched in the ascending order of the rules ID. So assuming that you are using the interface ACL. Now, as I mentioned that the two uh, often ACL that we use will be the basic ACL or the advanced ACL. And assuming that you are going to use the automatic order, first they are going to match the VPN regardless on how uh, in-depth is your rules. Then they are going to look for the more specific uh, 
filter. In this case, the more specific basically referring to the smaller source IP range in the mesh address. So uh, as I mentioned earlier on, if I have 1.0.0.0.0.255.255, .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 and uh, as compared with 1.1.1.0.0.0.255. So this will be the first in the order. All right, so this is what we call the smallest source IP address range is mesh first. The rules with the smallest rules ID is mesh first. Okay, now assuming that you are using the advanced ACL and you are using the automatic order, again they are going to match the VPN instance, then they are going to match the IP protocol, then only they will match the um, smallest source IP, smallest destination IP, that's the fourth in order, and then they are going to match the layer 4, in this case the smallest port layer 4, and finally the rules with the smallest rules ID is matched first. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you an example on how this uh, automatic order uh, behave. It's because that if let's say you are not familiar with how the ACL matching order, this can be quite confusing. Okay, so we are in the lab here. I have prepared these uh, three routers, R1, R2, R, and R3. They are connected through the gigabit Ethernet. All right, between R1 and R2, we have gig 0, 0 connected using a network of 10, 12, 0, 0. So we have a 0, 1 here and 0, 2 here. That's an R2. So we have 10, 23, 0, 0, uh, slash 24 for the segment router 2 and router 3. So we have dot 2 on router 2 and dot 3 in router 3. Now each of these routers, we have four uh, loopback interfaces with the address scheme stated over here. And between R1, R2 and R3, I have set up the OSPF under the area 0. So let me show you the IP address on router 1. As you can see that I have the loopback, okay, all the loopback and the actual interface. So on R2, it's the same. So I have 10, 12 segment and 10, 23 segment. So let me do a, a test ping to make sure that I can ping to 1 that is on the router 1 and I'm going to do a ping to 10, 23 Zero 03 that's on the router 3. And at the same time, I'm going to show you here my peering on OSPF. As you can see, that I do have the uh, router 1 as my neighbor as well as uh, router number 3. So both of them we have formed a full agency. Okay, so let me go into R1 and do a testing. So if I'm going to use my loop back and I try to ping to router 3, as you can see that the uh, route is fully converging and uh, we can ping from R1 and R3. So in this exercise, I'm going to show you how you can configure the telnet. All right, so we are going to create an ACL. And this ACL, we are going to use it to filter any source that is coming from 3.3.3 .3, telnet into 1.1.1 .1, I'm going to deny it and anything else will be permitted and for that I'm going to use a basic ACL thanks for watching please do not forget to subscribe to our channel